Hi everybody. Let us have a brief look at the synthetic applications of organometallic reagents based on chromium. There are different organometallic reagents based on various transition metals. Among those, we shall see today the organometallic reagents based on chromium. Now, there are different organochromium reagents used in synthetic organic chemistry. Among those, aryl chromium complexes or chromium arene complexes are the most widely used organochromium reagent. Already you have a carbene chromium complex. Uh, we have other uh, organochromium reagents, but this aryl chromium complexes or chromium arene complexes are the most widely used. Now they are air stable and they can be easily prepared. These are the basically two reasons why the uh, chromium arene complexes are preferred. Now these complexes are 18 electron species, pi complexes. They are actually 18 electron neta 6 species. They are pi complexes. Now let us see the preparation of these complexes. It's easy to prepare. You just heat the arene with chromium hexacarbonyl. You heat the arene with chromium hexacarbonyl. You get the arene chromium complex. Now, out of the uh, six carbonyl groups attached to chromium, three carbonyl groups goes off as carbon monoxide. The other three carbonyl group will be attached to the chromium, which will be attached to the benzene ring. So this is the arene chromium pi complex which we get when we heat hexacarbonyl chromium with a benzene ring or an aromatic ring. Now the method, this method of preparation requires strong heating, uh, I mean heating at high temperature and the yield is very poor. So this particular defect or this particular demerit has been overcome by using other carbonyl compounds or other chromium complexes. In the sense, the hexacarbonyl chromium has been replaced by tricarbonyl chromium and the other three ligands has been replaced. I mean, that means out of the six carbonyl groups, three carbonyl groups are retained and the other three carbonyl groups attached to chromium is replaced by certain other groups like 4-methylpyridine or ammonia group etc. These ligands are replaced, I mean the carbonyl group is replaced by other ligands. So you are replacing hexacarbonyl chromium with tri-substituted derivatives. By using these derivatives we get better yield and we need to use only mild conditions. Now, uh, when we use fused system, that is uh, compound substrates like naphthalene, pi complex formed is quite interesting. Now, if you are using substituted naphthalene, uh, particularly alkyl substituted naphthalene, then the substrate you get two different pi complexes, either the free ring complex or the substituted ring complex. Free ring complex means the chromium moiety gets attached to the ring to which the substituent is not attached. That is, if the naphthalene, uh, the substituted naphthalene, if the substituent is present on this ring, the chromium will get attached to the next ring. By substituted ring complex, we mean that the chromium moiety gets attached to that ring to which the substituent is attached. So this is the substituted ring complex. But if the substituent on the naphthalene is groups like methoxy group, fluorine group or dimethylamine group, then we get only free ring complex. That is, the chromium part gets attached to the uh, free ring, uh, the, to the ring to which the substituent is not present. Now, if you are using fuse system other than naphthalene, that is, fuse system having rings more than two, more than two rings, then the uh, complex which we get 
will be having the chromium part on the terminal ring. So, either on this ring or in this ring, you will get the uh, chromium group attached, not to the middle ring. So, you get the terminal ring complexes. When you use fused system, fused ring system, having more than two rings. So, these are the, uh, ex I mean, uh, general methods of preparation for fused rings or the type of pi complex which we get when we use fused ring. Now, this chromium marine complexes are highly sensitive towards oxidation, particularly in the presence of light. So, this particular uh, property of uh, chromium arene complex is utilized for decomplexation that is to remove the complex, uh, chromium part after the reaction has happened. So decomplexation can be done to free the organic compound by passing air through the solution of the complex in the presence of light or by treating it with oxidizing agent like iodine or cerium. So when you do this, decomplexation happens. That is, the chromium part gets removed from the organic product. So finally, that is, when you carry out the reaction using a chromium complex, chromium marine complex, to get the product alone, we'll have to carry out an oxidation step or uh, an oxidation step using iodine or cerium salt or uh, oxidizing it in air in the presence of light. Now coming to the synthetic applications of uh, chromium complexes, arene chromium reagents. Now uh, usually the benzene ring is uh, electron rich and it is uh, uh, prone to electrophilic attack rather than nucleophilic attack. That is, a nucleophilic attack doesn't happen on benzene ring. But then when you make it into an arene complex, arene chromium complex, nucleophilic substitution becomes easy or nucleophilic attack becomes easy. Now the reason is because the tricarbonyl chromium exerts an electron withdrawing effect on the ring and the ring becomes electron deficient. So, the aryl ring becomes prone to nucleophilic attack. So, the tricarbonyl chromium is, exerts an electron withdrawing effect on the aryl ring. So, any nucleophile can then come and attack on the aryl ring. So, here in this example, I have taken alkyl lithium group. So, the alkyl group with carbanion gets attached to the aryl ring. Now here there are two decomplexing steps which uh, we ha uh, which can be seen. In the one in the, the first one here, uh, TFA is used, trifluoroacetic acid is used, and then iodine is used. When you use TFA, what happens? You get de-aromatized product. See, you get cyclohexadiene. But when you use iodine alone, you get the aromatic product. You get the aryl compound. Okay, so uh, which is the uh, in uh, what is the uh, accompanying reagent or accompanying solvent while carrying out oxidation besides the final product? And this complex here, this complex is stabilized by the uh, chromium part. This carbanionic complex is stabilized by the chromium part because the chromium is electron withdrawing. Okay, so this is the basic uh, uh, nucleophilic how nucleophilic substitution happens using organochromium reagent. Now moving on to further reactions and further properties. When the nucleophile which comes is large, the product which we get is exclusively beta product, particularly for substituted arene complex. If the nucleophile is large, see here we have uh, used this large nucleophile and uh, you get the beta product. 
okay so exclusively meta product is obtained when the incoming nucleophile is large now when the uh, substituent on the benzene ring when the substituent there is a substituent in on the benzene ring then also we get meta substituted product as the major product okay so when the nucleophile is large and when the substituent is uh, uh, present on the benzene ring we get meta substituted product see here in this case we have they have used tfa and so you are getting uh, diene hex uh, cyclohexane hexadiene compound here they have used iodine so you're getting the aromatic product all right so you use large substitute nucleophile or if you are using substituted uh, arene complex then you get meta product now when the substituent is trimethyl silyl group when the substituent is trimethyl silyl group, you get exclusively para product. Now that's an exception from what we said earlier. So when the substituent is trimethyl silyl group, we get only para product. Okay, so here you have the trimethyl silyl group, you have the uh, nucleophilic reagent alkyl lithium and this it gets the alkyl group it gets attached to the para position all right so that's how the nucleophile gets attached onto the aryl chromium complex now we shall see one or two preparations by nucleophilic substitution on organic chromium reagents uh, preparation of 5 alkyl 2 cyclohexene from anisole chromium complex. Now you can see here anisole chromium complex is here, and uh, here this uh, alkyl lithium compound is the uh, carbanion or uh, the source for carbanion for the nucleophile, and it attacks the meta position, the position meta to the methoxy group anisole, and then followed by treatment with TFA that is uh, trifluoroacetic acid uh, for the reaction with ammonium hydroxide and HCl you get this ketone 5-alkyl 2-cyclohexene on your take. So when, since you are using TFA you get a uh, de-aromatized compound. Another preparation is the synthesis of echorinol which is a spirosis ketopinol. Now echorinol is synthesized from the starting material and uh, you are converting this into the uh, chromium complex and then when you treat it with uh, LDA uh, uh, what happens is this particular carbon the carbon which is attached to CN so cyano group will uh, be uh, will become anionic in its carbanionic nature and then that will go and attack the meta position of the epoxy group so this is the meta position of the epoxy group and you get this uh, intramolecular cyclized product. Alright, so we, here also you are using TFA and hence the aromaticity is lost. So this is the synthesis of a very known natural product. We do have to discuss further reactions and uh, a few more uh, organochromium uh, reagents. We shall be discussing those uh, topics in the next video. Okay, uh, if you have any clarifications to be done regarding whatever we have discussed now, please do it. Please contact me. Feel free to contact me. Thank you.